Yeah, pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Borgen. This is going to be a quick video as we talk about can the Phillies carry their momentum from finally winning another series against the Seattle Mariners into playing the almighty L.A. Dodgers. Well, let's get right into it. First of all, of course, Ranger Suarez was able to win the first game, pitching a very good game himself in game one of the series. As Rangers been able to start to lock it back in after getting off to a slower start working his way back from injuries. He's been able to get it going more lately as now he brings his ERA under four to a three six eight and pitched a very good six innings in that game. Of course, the scoring got started off by Gene Segura returning back to Seattle and hitting a homer. Hoskins then golfed one out. JT smoked a single up the middle. Nick ripped a double. JT singled again. And of course, Bean Gene Segura was able to have a uh, force out that scored Nick Castellanos there, and then Segura singled later in the game again, so Segura had a great return to Seattle, not just in this game, but in general, and Castellanos singled and Hoskins singled to all score runs in that one as the Phillies offense exploded in that one in a 9 nothing win in the next game. It wasn't as sharp for the Phillies as they were getting fooled by Robbie Ray's slider for a lot of this game. Eventually, they were able to start to pick it up in that fifth inning once Nick Castellanos, again, stepping up in this series, was able to hit the home run, which was the Phillies' first hit of the game in that fifth inning. So even though this score was very close in the end and the Mariners only won by one, if you just look at it that way, you don't really get the whole picture of this game. The Phillies didn't even get a damn hit to the fifth inning, but then they were able to get it going a little bit here as Reese Hoskins was then able to ho homer later off of Eric Swanson and then Gene Segura again was able to homer in his return to Seattle in that ninth inning off of Seawold who then was able to get Camargo out in order to end that game so that wraps up that game as the Phillies had <clears throat> a pretty solid start from Aaron Nola, uh, what he was able to pitch five and a third. He gave up four runs, but two of those were on Dinker. Hit, actually, three were on kind of like these Dinker type, because of Dinker type hits that he can't really do much about. Um, and it is what it is. Um, and then when it comes to the final game of the series, of course, the Phillies rebound. Sir Anthony Dominguez got the win in that game. But also, we have to shout out Bailey Falter for being able to step up. It was a goal to go four innings. He almost won five and would have been able to get the win if he did. He just missed doing that. Sir Anthony came in. Alvarado pitched all right. Familia battled through, but pitched good in the end, being able to get out of it. And then Knable was able to pick up his sixth save of the night. So if he's able to get a save opportunity, he'll be going for lucky number seven tonight against the LA Dodgers. And that's how that game rounded out, where Reese Hoskins supplied all the runs in that game with a grand salami and then almost took Bryce Harper's arm off. But let's get into now previewing the next series. The The first game is going to be an interesting pitching matchup of Zach Wheeler, the fireball, that obviously is getting it back himself just like Ranger. He's starting to get ticking in the right direction after coming back from being dinged up in the offseason himself against Tyler Anderson, who's pitched tremendously early on in his Dodgers career. Tyler Anderson's 3-0 and and already has 22 Ks on the season and a 2.78 ERA. Obviously, when it comes to the pitching matchup, even though Tyler Anderson has been on this year, I would have to give that favor to the Phillies due to how good and how Cy Young were the Zach Wheelers is the type of pitcher where Anderson's a very good bottom end of the guy, and he's proving to be even more than that to start this season. He's a guy that's obviously a strike thrower that's going to keep it in the zone, try to get you out east, west, north, south, not going to wow you with anything, has a good breaking ball, that might be the thing that wows you some. But if the Phillies are able to just jump on his meat pitches over the strike zone and not just let him work the corners left and right, they should be fine in the first game. It's just they're also going to need, obviously, as Willard keeps ticking in the right direction, you're going to need that to keep happening against an almighty Dodgers lineup as he's still trying to fully click it back in. Because in the second game, this would be a great first win for the Phillies to be able to get in the series to be able to notch that first one because the second game is going to be very tough. Anderson's been pitching good as a lefty for the Dodgers. But Kershaw's been pitching like the old school Clayton Kershaw again from <clears throat> um, his continuously younger mid-20s to late-20s years and not his mid-30s years. Dude does under a 2 ERA. His whip is ridiculous. He hasn't got a loss yet. And he's going up, fortunately for the Phillies, against Kyle Gibson, who's been arguably their hottest starting pitcher to start the season and has been the toughest for them in terms of pitching great ball games to keep them in games. Now the offense would just have to perform well enough against Kershaw, and that would be a doubt for me 
going into that game. That's why I think it's a big game one tonight against the L.A. Dodgers so the Phillies can get cooking in this series because they're going against a tough pitcher in Anderson, but a guy that can leave some pitches in the money zone if you're able to jump on those strikes. You can't start letting him work the corners and work you around with his breaking ball, then you're screwed because Kershaw ain't going to be easy. And then the final game of the series, Ranger Suarez, of course, stepped up against Seattle. They're going to need that again because they're facing Walker, or the second-to-last game of the series, I should say, this is a four-game series, but they're facing Walker Bueller. It's not easy for the Phillies in this one. Anderson's been great. Kershaw's been great. Bueller's been great. And Julio Urias have been great. Fortunately for the Phillies, they do got Wheeler, Gibson, Suarez, and Nola going themselves. They're just going to need the squeaky clean versions of each of them and get enough offense off of tremendous pitching for the LA Dodgers. Of course, they faced some good pitching in Robbie Ray, which they got no hit in five innings by him before they could get going on him a little bit with that Castellanos homer. They saw a youngster in Logan Gilbert. They're seeing a good youngster in Julio Urias, who has more experience than Logan Gilbert and is a stud, as well as Walker Bueller, who's one of the best young pitchers in baseball. So it's going to be a tough series for the Phillies. I think the, t the game that they have the best chance to win, just from looking at it on the outset, is game one because you got Wheeler going up against Anderson. If you can just jump on Anderson, the Phillies then are going to need to find a way to manufacture runs, you would think, against Kershaw and Bueller. So they're going to have to find a way to just get more hits and not rely so much on the home run ball. Where Julio Urias can still be wild at times and not just wild in terms of walks. I'm talking about wild in the strike zone as well and still leave some over when he tries to overthrow it to get his outs. So you can try to jump on that. I would say the first and last game based off of those. Well, the best chances for the Phillies to be able to split this series, where my goal going in is a realistic look into it, would be to split this series. My hope would be to obviously take three out of four, but my goal going in is a realistic one would be to split the series. This has been the Phillies talking about, can the Phillies ride that momentum from winning the Seattle series into L.A. as they take on the Dodgers? It's going to be a hell of a feat in order to win this series or split this series for a Philadelphia Phillies with the way and the pitchers they are facing. Peace out, everybody.